Hello, good morning. My name is uh, Yasin Mukadam. I'm a principal program manager with the Power Platform Engineering team. And, uh, and today uh, we would be talking about uh, Common Data Services API. And what we would cover is uh, I would set some context uh, around, uh, along with some API uh, use cases so that you understand uh, when uh, you sh how and when you can use the CDS APIs. We'll discuss around the authentication patterns available with demos. So I'll show you multiple ways of how you can get your authentication set up. Uh, then we'll talk about the API discovery. So where I'll explain how you can access uh, the various uh, 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 API information. Uh, we'll then cover the various API operations uh, around the request like read, uh, create, update, delete. Uh, after that, I will give you a holistic demo uh, with a .NET uh, console application that will illustrate the points of API, uh, mostly around how you can consume it uh, in an external application. And finally, we will talk about an, uh, a messaging integration pattern to show you how you can integrate uh, with uh, the Azure service bus without writing any code. With that, uh, let's get started. So uh, if you're familiar with common data services, uh, uh, then let's take a look uh, at what's inside. Uh, the common data services is an API first. Everything you do in CDS creates an API. It is the same API that is used by your Power Automate, Power Flow, Power BI, and uh, other external systems. Immediately below the API is you have the security layer uh, to make sure that the right people are seeing the right data and auditing all access along the way. From there, we get into the logic where you can implement custom uh, business logic because this logic is below the APIs ensures consistent business logic across applications accessing your data. Then we get to the heart of CDS, our data tier. This allows you to define the structure of your complex business data without writing any code. And behind the scenes, uh, we are putting your data in the right place using the optimum storage services provided by Azure. This allows us to seamlessly support practically any time, uh, any type of data from rational uh, relational data to log data to file data to search indexes to data stored in Azure Data Lake. Finally. Uh, uh, finally, no deployment of CDS lives alone. It must be integrated with other systems. We provide many ways to integrate CDS with external systems from eventing to web books to data export. So I will be explaining one of the eventing pattern as a part of this session around uh, Azure Service Bus. So, Leveraging APIs. So uh, when do you need to leverage APIs? So if you're creating a custom user experience, a custom application to build from ground up or a custom web asset to be built and integrated with existing application infrastructure, you would need uh, to access APIs. As an example, you already have a, 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 an application, a web application, uh, and you want to uh, show some data in that uh, web application from your CDS, then you may want to create a mashup uh, a UI and, and, and show that uh, data uh, within the context of your larger application. Uh, uh, if you want to do your backend integration that uh, is not available or not possible with Flow, Logic Apps, or data integration services, so if you want to have a point-to-point -point integration or you want to have an eventing integration in place, at, at that time you would want to uh, leverage the CDS APIs. 
And uh, finally, if you want to do some business operations and validation, so if you have complex business needs to support validations or custom operations that are not possible using native capabilities, like workflow, business rules, or calculated fields, then you would want to uh, use the APIs to, uh, to perform uh, these type of operations. With that, uh, let's look at uh, how do you get started with Common Data Services API. So we pretty much have two forms of APIs. We have a .NET based SDK. Uh, which is a legacy version. It's predominantly used in the CDS plugins. Uh, for external integration, we recommend the web API uh, based on OData v4 specification. Uh, so uh, let me quickly show you how you can, uh, uh, from where you can access this APIs and how it is available. So if you go in your make.powerapps.com uh, and you click on your advanced settings, it should typically take you to your uh, uh, your Dynamics 365 CDS instance. There you can select under settings customizations. In customizations, you can click on developer resources and here you can get the uh, URL of your web API or the URL of your SOAP services. For the purpose of this uh, demo, we would be mostly talking about uh, the web APIs and this is where you would get your URL from. So let's look at authentication. Uh, for uh, different patterns, you may want to use different types of authentication. So if you're doing a, a, a UI, uh, or type uh, uh, front end type integration uh, or building a custom user experience. In that case, you may want to pass the user's context so that uh, you only show the records that the user has access to uh, and you want to pass the user's context to fetch the records owned by the user or some uh, uh, contextual information of the user that is stored in CDS uh, in your external system. So at that time, you may want to pass the user's context. So I'll walk you through how do you uh, set up that type of authentication. Then you may want to uh, pass uh, uh, for your backend integrations. You may not want to pass the user's context. You may just want to use a, uh, an, an application account to do the integration. So I'll, I'll explain how do you set it up and, 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 and get that uh, going. And then finally, if you are writing any custom plugins uh, in that uh, context, uh, uh, the context of the user is already provided. So really, you don't need to do any authentication. So with that, let's uh, dive into the demo. Right. So for your for the purposes of your authentication, I'll just uh, switch my screen uh, and go to the the demo. So if you are a, uh, an administrator or you have access to your admin center of your O365 tenant, uh, which is what we use as a part of our platform or Dynamics 365 as well for the authentication. Here you would see you have your Azure Active Directory. When you click on that, it would open your Azure Active Directory. Within your Azure Active Directory, you can go and click on app registration. So in your app registration, when you click, you would have your, uh, um, you will click on a new registration. And as a part of that uh, new registration, so I've just set up uh, uh, a couple of uh, app uh, over here. I've already registered, so I'll just open that. So when, when you uh, click on, or when you're creating a new app, you would, uh, let's just, let's just create a new one. Yeah. So we'll just call it uh, CDS demo app. And uh, here you can select the account in this organization directory only, the account in this organization directory, multi tenant. 
So the purpose of this, uh, we'll select just a single tenant. We won't use the redirect URL. We'll keep it optional. Uh, and then I'll click register. So once I click register, it will populate these uh, points. After that, I will go in my API permissions. And I will say add a, a permission set. So when I do that, I will have two options here. One is your Dynamics uh, CRM uh, option. If you have a Dynamics 365 subscription, then you would select your Dynamics CRM as an option. If you have uh, a Power Apps uh, subscription, then you would select your Power Apps runtime services. So if I try to select this as an example and uh, I click delegate permissions and I click uh, this and I say add permissions, it would add it. But then when I would try to go and grant a consent to this, it would give me an error saying that your organization does not have a subscription. Uh, or service principle for the following APIs. And this is because my tenant is set up to use uh, uh, Dynamics 365 subscription and not Power App subscription. So I'll just go back and I'll select uh, Dynamics CRM. I'll select delegation permission. I'll select users and I'll say add. And I've added it and then I will grant permissions. So as soon as I grant permissions, the consent is uh, completed. So this is all that I need to do to register an application. Once I register the application, the most important key that I would need is my app ID. So I'll just uh, copy this, right? So here I have my uh, CDS demo app, which was created today, uh, right? So with that, if I move on to my application uh, that I have uh, uh, created and I will go in. That I have created, I'll go and open my web config file. In that, I will uh, specify the client ID that I've copied, uh, right? The redirect URL would be pretty much the ID, and I would specify the username and password. The reason I need to do that is my machine is running on uh, my Microsoft account, but my tenant is a trial tenant, and it has separate IDs. But in a real world scenario, you don't need to specify this. Uh, as long as you're using the same Active Directory and there is trust built, it would it would enable single sign-on. So once I have set this up, uh, I can uh, the uh, every request that the APIs make would run in the context of uh, of the user that is accessing the system. So with that, I'll move on to my app registration, and then let's just take a look at. Uh, the uh, service to service authentication as well. So I'll just show you the difference between the two around the registration, what you need to do. So the only difference between uh, having uh, uh, passing a user's context and creating an application account is you would need to uh, do an extra step around uh, a, a, a client uh, certificate. So you would go here and create a, a new certificate. So if I just go and create a, a new app, uh, say app registration. So my initial steps would be S2S demo. I'll leave it the same. And then I will go and put my API permissions. So here again, I'll select dynamic CRM because that's the subscription I have. I will enable grant consent. So these steps are the same, whether you pass the user's context or no. But if you want to use service to service authentication, you have to do an extra step around certificates and secrets. And here you can create a new certificate. So you can select what this is a, 
S to S CDS certificate. And you can select when it expires. We'll just leave it default for one year. And once you click add, you'll have an option to copy uh, uh, a value, which is what you would need in addition to the app ID. So once you have copied this, uh, we'll move to the app. Uh, and if you open the app config here, what you have is you'll have client ID. Uh, which is the application ID, the tenant ID, and you'll pass the client secret. So once you have this uh, uh, set up, and here as you see, you're not uh, going to be passing the username and uh, and password. So how does uh, CDS know under which user to execute the request? So for that, what you have to do is you'll have to go in your uh, uh, CDS instance, and you'll create select the application user. And application user, you would go in uh, specify the application ID. So this application ID is you'll get it from Azure. So it would be this application ID that you would paste. So once you paste this application ID, uh, CDS would uh, access the URI and the object ID and you can give it an email or uh, uh, information, whatever you want, and then you save it, right? So when your, uh, uh, when your uh, console application is going to execute the request, it's going to execute uh, under the context of this application ID. So every time you see the created by, modified by, would be this application ID. So that is what would be logged in audit. Uh, audit as well. So if you take a look at this execution, it's it's going and retrieving the record uh, within the context of the application user. In addition to that, uh, once you have created the, the application account, you can go and specify a CDS security role. So you may want to create a custom security role and give fine grained permissions around what the application uh, uh, account can do in CDS. So that way you have full control around what is possible and what is not possible. Uh, so with that, uh, you have both the options uh, to access your authentication and uh, and 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 it's pretty uh, uh, pretty uh, flexible. So with this, uh, we'll move on to the next section around uh, the request. Oh, oh, sorry, the API uh, discovery. So you would specify your API service. You would get this pretty much URL from your uh, uh, from the UI. And uh, once you have the URL, you would hack, enter and hash metadata. And once you do that, it would render the whole payload. So here you would see you have the entities, which is entity type is nothing but a table. Think of it as a table, it would have the name. Then properties would be the columns. So you would have various columns, right? And that's how you would uh, uh, access and discover your APIs. So if I just uh, uh, quickly show you what I mean. So here, uh, uh, again, if you go in your advanced settings, it will open up your Dynamics 365 settings. And here if you go in customizations and within customizations, you select developer resources to load this page. And from here you can get the URL. And uh, you enter your URL in the browser and you do a hash metadata and it would uh, load the whole payload. So here you can see you have the account entity the account entity has a key, primary key of account ID, and these are all the properties. And below the properties, you have all the relationships. So uh, when I walk you through various demos, that time I will illustrate what is how you can leverage these relationships to understand how you can perform uh, 
updates and deletes and so on and so forth. So this is how you would basically discover your API. So even if you create a new custom entity uh, uh, and call it, uh, uh, what, uh, give it whatever name uh, uh, that makes sense for your application, it would be accessed in, in, in a similar uh, fashion. So with that, uh, we'll uh, shift gears and uh, and uh, I will walk you through the options of uh, how do you create a record in CDS using the API. So we will, uh, I'll show you a, a account entity simple insert where basically you do a flat insert of all the records, uh, right? Then I will also illustrate uh, the options of uh, a deep insert. And here you can see that I am not only creating an account, but I'm also creating a contact. In addition to the contact, I am uh, also creating uh, uh, a, 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 a task I'm associating with, uh, with that uh, uh, account that I have created. And, and the way you can identify this account underscore task is through the metadata property. So if you want to do something similar, then you may want to uh, go to your metadata property. And if you search, uh, so this is your navigation property. So this means there is a relationship uh, of uh, account entity with your task and you can use that to tell the API that, hey, I want to create along with this account, I want to create a task with this information and you can send that whole uh, payload in, 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 in a, uh, you can send a single payload to perform this complex operation, right? So with that, I'll just move on to, uh, I'll open Postman uh, and uh, walk you through the create option just so that it's super easy and I have uh, a reference of how you can uh, uh, how you can set up postman so it's it's super easy so in the post uh, if you go and see I have my URL which is my CDS instance URL I have my client secret uh, that I did as a part of my app registration I've just given it separate version names and then I have a web API URL, uh, right? And then I have a callback URL and I have an auth uh, URL. So I have this information uh, set up. And then in my, uh, uh, so I'm creating an account here and I'm just giving a sample, just say CBS demo. Sample uh, is demo sample, and I'm just going to set these properties. But before I do send, I need to just make sure that I'm getting the access token. Uh, uh, you don't need to do this when you're doing your application. Uh, you it, it would be an automated process, but for Postman, I, I need to do this separately. So I will go and say request a token. I get my token and I'll say use this token. So this token is now refreshed. And then I will set my body like I did. In my headers, I will specify application type as J. And then I will uh, post this request. So once I uh, post this uh, request, uh, uh, the record has been created. And the reason I know that because of the HTTP status. In addition to that, when I get my uh, data back, I can see that the entity is uh, returned by a uh, GUID. So this is how I know that the record was uh, successfully uh, created, right? So this is a very example of a simple insert. I will uh, now move on to the deep insert. Again, in the deep insert, I'll just request the token uh, so that my token is. And then I have the same, so I will just do a CDS demo.
And here uh, in my header again, I pass the same. Nothing really changes. My parents are not there. So in the body, I passed uh, a, 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 a complex payload. Right. And then when I click send. I will see that uh, the account entity is created. And a task would be associated with this account as well. So it's all uh, successful. So that's how I can go and create. Uh, uh, I can do a simple create of one record and I can go ahead and also create a, a complex uh, a records. And, and this is I've just captured the various uh, uh, snapshots of, of both so that uh, you know what is what. And this would be your, uh, your your simple create operation. Right, and here I've already given a demo, but if you want to set up Postman uh, and, and test out these samples on your own, then you here is the documentation uh, to leverage Postman. So with uh, uh, the next topic, uh, the next uh, is about updates. So how would you update a record? So again, you can do a simple update. Uh, of a record and update individual columns or multiple columns for a single entity. In addition to that, you can also do upsets. So you can have conditional updates uh, if the condition is. Or and it also supports uh, optimistic uh, concurrency updates. So basically, if two users have access the record and 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 you want to notify the user that hey, this record has been changed. Uh, since you have last read before you perform the update, you have that ability to through e tags. So I'll just uh, explain that. How do you do that? So you have you can do pretty uh, uh, from simple to complex type of updates using the APIs. And I'll just move on to the uh, uh, to the demo. <coughs> Okay. So I'll just uh, access my. My record. And this is a simple update, uh, so I'll just change this. Uh, and in the value, I'll say update. Uh, And I'll just refresh the token. And the record is updated. So it gives me the activity ID and the information here. So this is like a simple update that you would perform. So I'll just uh, to illustrate a, a patch or optimistic concurrency. I'll just uh, fetch uh, a, a record. And again, I'll just refresh my stuff and I'll just fresh all the accounts. So if, if I want to know uh, if the. Uh, uh, optimistic concurrency is enabled, then I can call this function for the account. So this is what it would tell me that the optimistic concurrency is enabled for this entity. And then for my patch, uh, I will use the record that I just created. Right, I will go and uh, do my token. So here I am passing. I've just uh, passed a dummy uh, e tag to illustrate the point of um, concurrency. And and if I try to update this in here, I'm just trying to update uh, a, a single record. Uh, make some changes, and I try to update. 
and here it will tell me the version of the existing record doesn't match the row version property provided. So I cannot update this record because the easy tag does not match. So it gives me an exception that enables me to uh, to work with a, to fetch the latest record of the easy tag and then update it. Right. So I will go and get the easy tag for this account. And I will update it. So just have to refresh my token again. And here I will have uh, in my header, I'll have the, the tag. I'll copy this. I'll go back to my patch. Go back to my header here. I will change this tag. And now if I update, the record will get updated. So pretty much all this optimistic concurrency and complex uh, updates if I want to do uh, using the the match property and right uh, I can easily achieve it through uh, through the APIs right so here I just explained the simple scenarios I give an example same thing that I showed and and here are some documentations uh, links uh, for you to refer to and understand it more deeply and and use it in your uh, 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 integration scenarios. API update update uh, uh, post demo. So now we look at delete. Uh, so again delete is a, a very simple you will pass use the delete specify the entity name and the grid you want to delete the record and it would go and delete the record. So if I open my postman and I uh, specify this, uh, the header is JSON and I so if it does not exist, it will give me an exception. If it exists, then it would delete the record. So it's a pretty uh, straightforward process. With that, we will move on to the retrieve option. So retrieve is again, if you want to retrieve a single record, then you can retrieve it with the ID and get all the columns, or you can specify the single record and single column and, and specific columns that you want to retrieve. So let's quickly take a look at that, and then we will move on to more complex uh, uh, demos so uh, scenario so here I already executed this so I'm getting all the columns right uh, for the next one I specify just two columns so if I change this So I'll pass this. So here I get my revenue and, and only the two columns that I need that I have specified. So 
you can do it either ways. Uh, if you want to go more advanced, then you can also use filter operations. So here I'm not passing any IDs. I'm just saying I want the accounts uh, and these columns and I want it filtered by this name. So So I can pass these type of filters and get the records, right? Uh, in addition to that, I can also do uh, get related records. So if I want to get accounts and contact information, then I can do that as well. So I can expand. So here I'm saying I want for this account, I want the name. And I also want the primary contact ID with uh, with this. So we may use may use this record, and I will do my get token. So here I'm not only getting the account, but I'm also getting uh, related uh, data. So I can do that as well. So I can go pretty advanced. In addition to that, I can pass uh, the fetch XML queries, uh, which is the query language used by CDS to query related data. I can execute individual views. So in the .NET demo, I will show you some more uh, retrieve options. So I can create a view in CDS and I can call that view uh, and execute it as a part of the APIs as well. And here I talk about filters relationship that I just demoed. And uh, that's the read demo which I've already done. So with that, if I move on to the, the .NET application uh, for retrieve uh, data. So here, uh, if you see this program, it's a pretty straightforward program, but here you can pass like uh, expand, you can do limits. I want to only get the top records, so I can uh, specify that as well. Uh, I can specify ordering, uh, I can do aggregates. So if I want to basically just get uh, the apply aggregates, I can apply aggregates. If I want to uh, in my query, I can do fetch XML. So if I want to pass a query instead of using just uh, uh, the expand operation, sometimes you may need this uh, for some scenarios. And we have open source tools uh, which will enable you, which will generate this. Uh, using a UI. Uh, it's in the XRM uh, tools. It's called uh, Fetch XML Builder. Uh, you can also use predefined queries like I was saying, so you can call views uh, and, and, and then pass the view ID and then you would get the data. So in, in a nutshell, you have pretty advanced options uh, to fetch your records and meet your various uh, scenarios. So I'm just running this uh, .NET application now uh, without Postman. So you can see I'm not, uh, it's not asking me for authentication, etc. Right? And, uh, and, and, and it executes uh, pretty much all the scenarios that I was showing in the code. So you can do filters within one hour, you can do all kinds of uh, advanced uh, queries that you would use uh, uh, you would do with SQL. Right, so you can these are the views that I'm calling, right? So. So this is how your uh, your end to end application uh, integration would work. So if you would have a UI or something, you could do it. You could do it with 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 any any form. And here I just uh, the demos that I've shown it's available uh, on GitHub so you can download the samples and, and test it out for yourself and, and play around with the various console applications. 
and uh, they should be in GitHub. They should be here. So the link that is there, you'll have all the demos that I showed. So the demo that I showed you was uh, uh, query data and uh, single tenant to tenant uh, authentication. So this is the two, but you have a lot more options to play around with and, and test it for yourself. So with that, uh, uh, Right. In addition to that, it also supports impersonation. It supports uh, batch operations. There are a bunch of functions and actions that you can call. So if you need the full scope of the documentation, then I just put the link here for your reference so that you can do more advanced uh, uh, scenarios. So with that, we we'll move on to the a, a different integration pattern instead of point to point we can look at a middleware like azure service bus uh, so cds comes uh, native uh, it has a no click integration with azure service uh, a no code integration with azure service bus that you can leverage uh, so i'll just walk you through how to set it up right and and, and give a demo So here I just walk you through how to set up the message queue. Uh, a step by step in instructions of how do you do it. And once you have set it up, then I explain how do you uh, register the message queue in CDS using the, uh, the plugin registration tool. So you will log into CDS, you will select your instance, then you would say, I want to register a new service endpoint. Within the service endpoint, you would copy your uh, endpoint. And then once you have that, you would have your endpoint registered. After that, you will add a step as a part of the step you would uh, pretty much perform. And then when we create a record, we should see a message. So I'll just move on to my If I log on to my portal.azure.com and I click on service bus. Here I have created a service bus. So in the uh, presentation, uh, you have the steps to register it. So I will go and select uh, queues. I have selected uh, my queue is here. And in this queue, you will see I have messages because the records we have been created. So I have registered the accounts entity to receive messages, right? And the way uh, the account entity knows that it has to send this to uh, this message queue is by this registration step in the plugin registration tool. So in this tool, I go and I select, I say register. Say register a new service endpoint. I put my uh, connection string. Right? And then in the step, I will uh, say that I, when the record is created, account entity, I will select the endpoint. Uh, and I will make this asynchronous and server. So we, you, part of the post operation, right? And, and that way, whenever a record is created uh, without impacting the user's uh, response uh, in the background, uh, within uh, in the background, the uh, newly account entity would be exported uh, to the Azure service bus. And from there, if I have listeners, then I can pull that message and do my downstream integration. And then using the APIs again, I can update the, the the, the, the status. So you could do pretty complex integration patterns, but this is how you would go and set it up. And I would uh, come here in my message. Uh, 
So here, if I click on my service bus explorer, um, like. And I say receive messages. So the message, one message is received and I click and in this, uh, I can get all the properties of the account entity that I can use and consume. So if I have a listener uh, uh, available, there are samples. So if you have that, then you can see the whole uh, XML payload. So that's how you would uh, uh, do an Azure, uh, uh, like a messaging type of integration out of the box with CDS. And here I just highlighted all the steps around when the record is created so you can test it. A new message is received. And uh, in addition, we also have options for webhook. So I don't have a demo for that, but the documentation is there for you to try it out if you want to. That uh, will end this session. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for your time.